okay guys so in today's this video what we are going to do we are going to install a domain controller with windows 2019 server i will show you what all the steps we have to follow if we are going to deploy windows 2019 domain controller as in step by step so let's start with this uh, what i have done i have just installed one of the windows 2019 server at uh, one of virtual machine and now I'm just going to log in on this. Okay. So you can see this is my base server uh, at which we are going to deploy it uh, our 2019 environment and 2019 server dom domain controller. So when we are going to deploy Windows 2019, the couple of uh, 2019 domain controller, so we have to just consider a couple of things. This is my server. You can see it here. It's a blank. Currently, it's in work group. And this is the computer name. So obviously, you should not keep this as a computer name. So when we are deploying a Windows or any version of domain controller, the couple of basic things that we have to follow. Let me quickly share the points with you. The first point is first you should rename your computer account or computer name computer name as a second point you can configure IP address so these two points always remember whenever you are going to deploy a domain controller like the first domain controller especially and the third point the consideration of your dns so mostly when you are going to build another any new domain environment you have to use the dns and their dns configuration also so let me go ahead and show you the deployment of windows so first what i will do i'm going to rename this computer account or computer name I'm putting it as a DC1 here. Just rename it and leave it as is everything. So I just place that. Okay, while it's okay, might be the duplicate name exists in the same network. So that's why it's giving me an error message. No issue. Let me quickly change the network because it's taking some IP address. So with my existing ones. Just go ahead and change the shortcut as ncpa.cpl. If you go in my detailed video related to Windows 2019, you will get all these shortcut details. CPL, ncpa.cpl, that will open your network. Okay, so basically it's taking with my existing domain, the IP and everything. So I am putting an IP address as 20.0.0.10 and I'm taking it same as the DNS one because I will install the DNS server here itself. Just click and OK. OK close. So I place the name and the IP. I'm taking a reboot. So the name convention should be applied over there. Now my server is getting back from reboot because I changed that name. Name change and IP configuration. That means these two are the primary component or the primary steps. Once it's done, you can just go ahead and log in on the server. At uh, Initial windows of versions of windows like 2008, 2008 R2 where you place or if you go in the 2003 we have a command as DC promo. So with the help of DC promo we can easily install windows active directory service or windows domain controller we can create. But now this DC promo is discontinued and uh, the deployment of domain controller will 
uh, in two parts the first one is adding of role service and the second one is promote server to a domain controller so currently i am just uh, going to add it here so the first part i'm going to do it takes a few minutes once they're ready okay click on next from here you can choose the server and then Active Directory Domain Service ADDS. It will ask to add some remote tools. So just click on Add Features, and you can see it here. Active Directory Domain Service. I have added that. I am also adding a DNS server role at the same stage. You can also do at the time of deployment of uh, your first domain controller. So this is my first domain controller in the entire forest. So just clicking on Next. Next. It will ask for the Azure configuration. Keep DNS as next, and at the final stage, click on Install. So it will take a couple of minutes in the installation, approximate uh, two three minutes. It would be totally depends on the your system speed and everything. So just wait for a minute and we see. Okay, so now. The installation of this these two rules has been completed successfully, and it's now asking to promote this server to a domain controller. You can see the installation is completed. Now we have to promote this server to domain controller. So now just clicking on that. This is the second part or a second step for this deployment, uh, Active Directory deployment. So here you can see there will be three options. One is the add a domain controller to an existing domain. So add a new domain with an existing forest and add a new forest. So these three options are available. If you have any, you would like to add as an additional domain controller, you can select this one. If you'd like to add as an exist as a new domain with your existing forest, like as a tree domain, so you can choose this option. And this one is if you are going to create a complete new forest setup so i'm just going to add it as an abc.com new domain you can choose the name as per your business requirement and as per your business here i'm just taking it as a sample one so i just taken abc.com now it will go for the next option when i click on next it will try to look up the things and then will show the domain controller options could take a few minutes but not much okay so here it will show the domain functional level and the forest functional level so domain functional level represents the minimum requirement of your operating system if you are going to promote a server as a domain controller if i choose the domain functional level as 2016 so in that scenario it will at least must have a 2016 level server available in uh, in your environment then only you can promote it to domain controller or could be above 2016 same as for the forest functional level you can choose any of them as per your requirement apart from that you can also see it here the specify domain controller competencies like here i already installed a dns server but you need to ensure that you must have our DNS option selected. Still, it would be disabled if it's a first domain controller. You, it's mandatory to have a DNS server role installed. And the first server is always as a global catalog server. I have uh, given the details in my detailed video of the part 1 2019. If you refer the same video, you will get the details on uh, the domain DNS server and what is the global catalog. And, uh, everything rodc can be possible but uh, it's the first server so you cannot make it the server as a rodc here one of the option dsrm password directory services restore mode so if you you have a single domain controller and the server get crashed for the recovery purpose you have to use the directory service restore mode password and uh, you must uh, keep one secret password here and keep it with you safely so 
at the time of recovery only this required if you have multiple domain controllers then this option would not require it for the recovery okay you can create a dns delegation but i am not going to create a dns delegation at this moment that will ensure an authoritative uh, parent zone to another dns server but it's not going to do it right now just click on next and it's also not required because if you are building a new domain environment so it's always recommended you must use your existing dns and existing environment uh, independent dns server okay it will show you the netbios name for your dns uh, for your domain just click on next once you click on next it will ask the path to store active directory database and log files database so that would be the location of your database files here you can see the ntds ntds is a default folder and ntds.dit is the default active directory database file so it will show you the location of your DAC, uh, database, log file database as well as syswall. Syswall is basically used to store system volume information or you can say uh, like group policies and uh, that uh, uh, various uh, group GPOs that you store to apply for the clients. These kind of information would be stored. If you go in the partition detail in my first video, you will get more detail on these three things, especially on the syswall detail once you click on next you will get an option of deployment you can view the script from here whatever the commands that can be executed and here the detail which we have selected as a review summary for the checklist next we you click on next it will do the prerequisite check everything is going fine then it will start it will give you the option for the deployment so from initial stage what we have done we have install the role or as a service role which we have deployed and as part of second step we are going to promote this uh, role or this server as a domain controller here we are going to build a complete new domain controller we are not going to add an domain uh, exist in an existing domain we are not going to add any domain controller in your existing domain if you want to study about uh, how, what is domain controller, what is global catalog server, what are the differences, you may watch, watch uh, my part 1 2019 video that have in more detail on this. Okay, so all prerequisite pass, couple of warnings are there. You may ignore the warnings because it's uh, talking about the previous version compatibilities and all. If you want, you can also refer it. Next, click on install. So it will take a couple of minutes and then it will reboot uh, my server to get the deployment completed. So just wait for a minute and we can see what will go next. Okay, now you can see it uh, shows uh, it's about to sign out. So that means it's uh, the installation has been successfully completed in the background. You can see it and now it's taken a reboot. So it, once it's back, uh, you, you won't be getting a local login option. You will be getting only a domain login option available over there because as a part of deployment, local account will no more available. It would be available if you are going in a directory service restore mode. Then only you will get a local account on any domain controller. Otherwise, you won't be getting local accounts. You know? Let's it's back with the domain and we can see our domain is completed successfully or not. The post deployment one of the activity you have to do at uh, you need to set the local server DNS uh, configuration because when you deploy Windows uh, 2019 or 2016, 2012 even or, or two also. So once you deploy the domain controller it will automatically flush the DNS configuration like it will change it to local host so let me I will show you the things once the server is back with us it's about to come reboot is in progress it's applying computer settings and applying the setting policies
okay so now you can see the server is back and ready once i clicked on ctrl alt l to log in on the server you can see now it's abc slash administrator because i choose the name as in abc as my domain name so i just logged in with the password and you will get all the options available like the basic group policies active directory domains and computers dns server these options would be available over there you will see i can i will show you the remote administration tools are installed here Okay, when I click on the tools, you can see the Active Directory domains, trust, domain site services, users, computer, DNS server, everything is now listed here. Just click on that and just click on my DNS. So have a look on this, these two things. Okay, this is my DNS server. And here you can see the forward lookup zone. The default abc.com zone is listed here with the dc1 information if we go in the active directory abc.com domain is listed further to that we can add multiple domains can domain controller and you can see in dc1 is the domain controller it will automatically go in the default first site uh, it's a default in structure you can move this server to other sites or as per your requirement now you can see one more thing here if i go back on my network configuration part you can see it's still an undefined network so what we can do we have to just go back and check this is the post activity after deployment of this you can see it's flush to localhost so just go ahead and change the configuration as per your dns information so i'm just going to put it here now just okay okay let me quickly enable and disable and enable this uh, to make registration of this okay so fine it's now mapped with your abc.com the domain is specified if you check with the server configuration part or like from the property section you will also see this is a part of domain and the company name is dc1 dc1.abc.com so guys that's it's all about deployment of windows 2019 step by step deployment of your domain controller and if you want to learn about detailed things related to domain controller some theoretical concepts along with the lab and hands-on things uh, you may do watch my other videos which i already uploaded so thank you so much for watching and do subscribe my channel I will say in the last so you will be up, get updated with the latest videos and information. Thank you so much.